What school is it? Central Elgin. Central Elgin. You're the teacher? What, no, the kids? I'm the mother. I'm oh, you're the mother of all these kids from that school. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Welcome to the show. We have one of the hottest performers in music today, the extraordinarily talented, the Natalie Merchant is here. She's going to perform from her latest CD titled Ophelia. And then we have renowned psychologist, Dr. Harriet Lerners, here to talk about that special relationship, the one between mothers and daughters. Oh, well. <laughs> and then Gordon Pinson, a man who I greatly admire, and Carrie Matchett, they're stars of the new series that a lot of people are talking about, Power Play. All of this and lots more so. Don't go away. is as much a poet as she is a songwriter. Her latest CD, Ophelia, is approaching platinum status, and she was a large part of Lilith Fair success this past summer. Ladies and gentlemen, singing The Living, please welcome the Natalie Merchant. The song is The Living. Sad 
song. Pizza. Oh, well, that was a happy song. Pizza. Very sad. Somebody's about to go and end their life. Once they... I started singing it, I realized it probably wasn't a good afternoon to pick me up for your watching. <laughs> it's not a pick me up song. This is a song about how do, how do you get inspired to write a song like that? Well, um, or is, is inspired the word? It's. Well, I met this old older gentleman about four years ago when I, I moved to a new town and he was always hitchhiking on the side of the road and I would pick him up and take him into town and, and we'd talk and oh, gradually over the years I found out a lot about his life and it was a very sad life. And um, he's an alcoholic and he opens up to me from time to time but usually he's just like, just go into town, you know, just take me into town. And, but then other days he'll tell me about how he ruined his life basically with alcohol and how his family doesn't want anything to do with him and now he, it, and it's sad, it's really sad but I, do, I just feel like, um, I felt like telling a story, you know. You know what, I met a man once who used to sleep in the park up the street and a bunch of people got together to sort of help him out he was partially blinded with cataracts and, and I got to know him, I gave, gave him the key to my house so he could leave his stuff inside rather than carry it all day and he started to tell me a story and he'd ruined mm -hmm. his life through alcohol but I was and now that you tell me your story, I mean, it just applies to people who, I don't know for what reason, end up in such sad things in life. Let's change the topic. <laughs> well, actually, you know what I'd like to ask you about that somebody mentioned to me that you were trying to figure out? Uh, and I think it's a really valid question, is why, why it is that men do, and, and women, but it seems often that men do so much evil in the world. And somebody told me that it's a question that you've been trying to figure out, why people do evil. Yeah, well, the, the, we were talking about it before. I was just asked, well, what are you reading? And I had just finished reading a book called King Leopold's Ghost, and it's um, about the history of the Belgian Congo. And what I found out through reading the book, this isn't going to cheer up your viewers either, is that okay. it, from um, the 1870s to probably the early 1920s, about the estimate is 10 million Congolese people died, many of them through forced labor in the rubber industry. Because of this man? Because of this man and his greed. And that, that, was, just, that was just the Belgian Congo. All, all the other large European countries had imperialistic interests in Africa, as we know. Yes. Yeah, I read about, I've been to Africa a lot. I like the place. And they really, the greed that went into there and the power, and they, they, in the name of money, mm -hmm. so many people were killed. It's interesting that we ask which I ask myself why why people do evil and for me I, I almost have to redefine the term human being because it's not my de definition of human to do that yet I never ask why there is so much good hmm. I never ponder why people do good things I only ponder why people do evil where I think our, our nature is I have to come to terms with it, that fact that it one exists in balance with the other well I can understand people's motivation for doing good bringing more beauty into the world, bringing, you know, making a more just and insane society. But uh, it's, it's the, the cruelty and the, the greed, the dishonesty, the deceit, the evil that is more confounding. So maybe that's why so many works of art are about that, and so many plays, so many books, so many films. So many, you know, there's so, we, we all ponder it because it is totally confounding. It's confounding, and yet it seems to be a, a reality of, as I said, rather than redefining my definition of what a human being is, maybe I have to understand it better mm -hmm. and accept that that thing does exist, that, that quality, that random factor, if it is random. Are we yeah. interesting you? What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, it's something definitely, and then the, to cheer, cheer myself up after that book, I decided to read, there's a book called Wild Swans that was very popular in, yes. in the States, which I never got around to reading. And uh, it's about, uh, it's interesting because you, you do have Harriet coming on the program, but um, three generations of a Chinese family. And uh, talk about cruelty, just the, the, the Chinese Cultural Revolution, another mind-boggling epic of right. insane slaughter and pillage for what purpose, I, could, I just can't tell. 
The happy side to all of this is we happen to live in the best country in the world, at least one of them, which makes you realize that after you read all of these things, to realize that we live here in Canada. Where Natalie Merchant comes from, and he's produced his five piece of work, and she'll sing us another tune when we come back right after this, okay? Okay. Generous, the hit single from Natalie Merchant's Ophelia CD. And we're back with the lady herself performing My Skin. Ladies and gentlemen, Natalie Merchant. <laughs> Thank you. 
I, it's funny because I have a different experience listening to you live than I do when I'm listening to you in my car or on the stereo. Hmm. I get, um, I was sitting here kind of sad. I've, I've just realized I chose two, the two saddest songs on the album to Look play well, for it you worked, today. Well, it worked, badly. <laughs> my goal to devastate you. <laughs> well, it worked completely. <laughs> Mission devastation. <laughs> Natalie was a big part of Lilith Fair this uh, past summer. How was it? It was great. It really was. It must have been an amazing experience. Yeah. I think there were about 65 different women artists over the course ah. of the summer. What a thrill. And Sarah McLaughlin's an angel. I really enjoyed meeting her and spending... I played 55, 56 shows. I can't remember how many, so we spent a lot of time together. You should also know that uh, this album is dedicated to the memory of a friend, Mr. Allen Ginsberg, the great poet. Mm. You were close friends. You went to th three funerals for him? There were a lot of memorial services for Alan, and um, I only knew Alan the last five years of his life, but I kind of adopted him as my, my wacky uncle. <laughs> he, was, he was an amazing person. He was so well-read, so well-traveled. He had met every important person of you know, the latter part of the century, and he just lived such a full life, and he and included everyone around him all the time. And, he, um, I don't know, he just never stopped wanting to learn. I remember one of the last times I went to his apartment, he just had a stack of about 200 books next to his bed, and he said, I'm going to read these before I croak, Natalie. 200? <laughs> they were just stacks and stacks of books. That, that, when you said that what you admired about him was that he never lost his desire to learn or his love of learning, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Would that apply to yourself, I would think? I'm definitely... <coughs> Pretty yeah. driven to learn. If yeah. I don't learn, I feel lazy. You know? I feel like there's not a lot of purpose. You heard two songs off the album. They are the saddest songs. There are other. <laughs> there, <laughs> there are some happy selections on the album. There are. There's the some album. happy and some. And I was sitting in the car, really enjoying them. And at home, I was <laughs> enjoying see. them. But these are the saddest. But, but they are happy beautiful. Happy album. <laughs> Here, s smile now. Happy. Say. <laughs> this is Natalie Merchant and Dini Betty, and we're happy because we heard Ophelia. <laughs> 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 we'll be back. <laughs> 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 <laughs>